Hello, I hope everyone is doing well. Thank you so much for all the support in my previous videos. I'm going to break this topic into two parts. In this video, part one, I'm going to focus on how the campus worker introduces the Ministry of Witness Lee to the student. I will also talk about how the student is introduced into some of the heavier Lord's Recovery meetings, such as the Lord's Table meeting and the prayer meetings. In part two, in my next video, I will talk about how the student is introduced to some of the heavier young people's meetings, such as the young people's conferences, uh, trainings, jubilees, uh, and a few other things um, I'll talk about. So firstly, as I mentioned in my last video, uh, the campus work will normally begin by presenting the Lord's Recovery Ministry um, by giving the student a book titled The Normal Christian Life by Watchman Nee. And the reason why they start with Watchman Nee is because Watchman Nee is considered to be a lot more orthodox than Witness Lee. So at this point, the campus worker is still taking the safe approach with the student. But when the student starts to open up a bit more, um, the campus worker will move on to presenting the ministry of Witness Lee to the student, which is probably 99% of where their revelations have come from. <laughs> so what they might do first is they might start by giving the student uh, printout copies of Witness Lee's ministry, just to warm the student up to some lighter stuff with some lighter stuff. If the student receives the material well, then the campus worker will move on into presenting the actual books of Witness Lee to the student. And now the first book that I was given by Witness Lee was called The Basic Elements of the Christian Life. I've still got this, this book with me. Uh, now Watchman Nee's name does appear on the cover, but he plays a very cameo role in this book. The book is pretty much comprised of Witness Lee's you know, opinion, opinions on how we should or must live a Christian life. Um, so yeah, I was given this book to read, and I remember asking the campus worker, who is Witness Lee? I was puzzled because I never honestly heard that name before, even though I'd been meeting <laughs> in the Christians on campus for at least six months, I still never heard of that name. Because, as I've been saying in my other videos, they hide his name very, very well um, to avoid any accusations against the cult. So the campus worker replied by telling me, you know, Witness Lee, Brother Lee, he was a humble minister of the word who, di who did a lot of work in helping the church grow and expand in many different cities and even different countries all around the world. So I thought, wow. What a great guy. Uh, I sort of got the impression that he was like a, a missionary figure, an important missionary or, or something like that. Uh, that's what I thought at the time. Also, during this time, I got introduced to pray reading. Now, pray reading is a term that Witness Lee pretty much made up. You won't find the word pray reading anywhere in the Bible. Uh, now, I'm going to give an example of how they do this. Okay, so Isaiah 9 verse 6, a very famous verse in Christianity, and also a verse that this group uses to claim that Jesus is the Father. Uh, this verse reads, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. So this is pray reading. Uh, so that might go something like this. For unto us a child is born. Amen. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Amen. Unto us a son is given. And the government, and the government, Lord, amen, shall be on upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Amen. Amen. You are so wonderful, Lord. Counselor. Amen. You are our counselor, Lord. The mighty God. Oh, you are so mighty, God. The everlasting Father, Amen. You are everlasting, Amen. And the Prince of Peace. So it might go something like that. Uh, and this is, yeah, this is crazy, absolutely crazy. 
Uh, and it's possible too that the student might be a little bit creeped out by this weird behaviour. But the campus worker or the other member will comfort the student by saying something like, you know, don't worry brother, um, the more Christ you receive, the easier it will, it will be for you to release your spirit. Amen. Uh, yeah, and also during this stage, the student will be introduced to this term called drinking, drinking Christ. And this is where they pretty much shriek, shriek, Oh Lord Jesus, oh Lord Jesus, oh Lord Jesus. And pretty much the louder you do it, the better. This is also what they call, witness Lee called, yeah, the same, exercising the spirit or releasing the spirit. And if you're doing this in the meetings and you're not doing it loud enough in the, in the meeting, you know, they will often call people out. They will actually embarrass people in front of everyone and tell them that, you know, you need to be louder, brother. You need to be louder, sister. Yeah, I, I saw this happen many, many, many times. It was crazy. Um, so if the student actually receives all this, um, what will usually happen is that the student will start to fully integrate into the actual Lord's Recovery meetings. As I said in the last video, it's possible that the student may have already been introduced to some lighter Lord's Recovery meetings, such as children's meetings um, and a couple of others. And this is just to give the student a taste of what's to come. Um, yeah, but now we're at the stage where the student is heavily integrating into the actual cult. Um, and it's likely that, likely that the student will start by probably attending the Lord's Table meeting. Uh, now the Lord's Table meeting is pretty much similar to like a, a Sunday church service. Um, they usually start with singing um, and after around probably 30 minutes they will transition into a message on some more some of the more basic teachings uh, from Witness Lee. This is usually presented by a prominent Lord's Recovery member, uh, but not always, not always. Uh, and then after comes the serious stuff, the serious stuff, the prophesying section. Uh, and this section is based around a series of books uh, which keep going and going uh, called The Holy Word for Morning Revival by Witness Lee. Now, again, they do have Watchman Nee's name on these books, but yeah, don't be fooled. Almost all of the context, content, all of these books are from Witness Lee. And you're pretty much expected to parrot this content at the Lord's Table meetings. So during the prophesying section, people will just stand up, you know, one by one, and they'll literally be parroting what they enjoyed, enjoyed uh, in these little morning revival books. Um, you know, there will be very little Bible in these meetings. It will just be Witness Lee's interpretation on how we must live in order to be a proper Christian. Uh, and how terrible these worldly Christians are. Oh, it's terrible. You know, so much for oneness. Uh, so yeah, the student will also be given a morning revival book, and the student will also be expected, will be heavily pressured by the campus worker and others to stand up, you know, in front of the whole church and to share their enjoyment of these little witness Lee books. And if the student doesn't really want to share, or well, they might be a little shy, uh, often the group pressure will be poured on the student and, you know, they'll be told, you know, you need to ex exercise your spirit, brother. You need to exercise your spirit, brother, just like you exercise your body. You also need to exercise your spirit. Uh, and this can be very distressing for the student. Um, and also in the locality that I was in, they very rarely mentioned Witness Lee's name in the Lord's Table meetings because, you know, there might be visitors or some less matured Christians in these meetings. So usually they, you know, they even take the safe approach in their own Lord's Table meetings. Um, you will hear them sometimes say Brother Lee, um, but I don't think I ever heard them say Witness Lee's name in the Lord's Table meetings. You know, because I don't want to give the impression to people that they're following Witness Lee. But in reality, they are. So yeah, um, if this goes well, if the student is open to all this stuff, then the student will, will probably be also introduced to the prayer meetings. 
Uh, and at these prayer meetings, you will, have, you will see a lot of heathen behavior. Matthew chapter 6 verse 7 says, But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think they'll be heard for their much speaking. And this is what this cult is, this cult is doing, exactly what this verse says not to do. They shriek, Oh Lord Jesus, Oh Lord Jesus, Oh Lord Jesus, Amen, Amen, Oh Lord Jesus. Uh, yeah, and the student, eventually the student will start acting like this too. Yeah, it's terrible. So yeah, in the next video, I'll talk about some of the other meetings, and I'll also talk about some of the heavy, heavy student meetings, uh, such as the Young People's Conferences, Jubilees, uh, trainings, etc. And also what will usually uh, happen is that the campus worker will start to treat the student a lot differently. Uh, the deceptive love bombing approach will completely go out the window once the student is fully conformed to this cult. And the campus worker will act like a completely different person towards the student. I'm going to speak about this in my next video. Uh, and once I've finished my next video, I'll probably be halfway through my series on this cult. Um, yeah, and then after that, I'll, I'll in my next half of my video series, I'll start to talk about um, some of the fear tactics that they use to trap people in this cult. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching, and thank you, Brother Paul, for allowing me to speak again. Uh, God bless.